Right, started off Brentford 1, Liverpool 4. And uh, it was a mixed bag for Liverpool because they won in style, but they came away mm. flooded with injuries. Yeah, I was considering this. I wonder if, if, if in hindsight, if you'd said to a Liverpool fan, no injuries but draw. Do you think they would have taken it? I don't know. It's an interesting dilemma, that, isn't it? Um, I get points on the board because of Arsenal's form, and even though City dropped points at the weekend, obviously City's form is obviously really important at the moment. Um, but I wonder if, yeah, on this path, and particularly with City, kind of that fixture in 28 on the horizon and Sunday's Carabao Cup final, you wonder if that would have, have maybe, right, away point, not the worst thing, go again and keep everyone fit. As it stands, as said, we think Joss is going to be out for a couple of months. Um, he looks like he's avoided the ACL injury, but there's enough damage there. It's probably going to keep him out to, I guess, we're probably sort, sort of about game week 34 period. Nunes, we think, um, is now a doubt for the final, which obviously makes him a doubt for Wednesday night against Luton. Yep. And there were some reports last night, unconfirmed at this stage, um, but it did include one, a, a media account in Egypt that's got 1.5 million followers on Twitter um, that Salah's had a setback as well. Now, in Salah's case, he's probably already got you more points than than maybe you'd have hoped for this week on yeah. the one start. That, that's, that's great what he's done at the weekend. Um, and he looks great. And fingers crossed for him and owners that obviously he stays available for Wednesday night. But suddenly you've, you've, you've ripped the shit out of that front three, haven't you? Yeah. You're down to Diaz, Gakpo plus one more, aren't you? You're yep. something like Diaz left, Gakpo up front, maybe Harley, Harvey Elliott on the right-hand side of the front three. have lost Curtis Jones as well. I mean, I that is so unlucky that's, to have. That's going to be significant as well. Um, looking sort of into probably an April recovery, certainly going to be out of the rest of this win, the Carabao Cup final. I think it's really unfortunate for him because I think there's every chance he might be looking at an England call-up yep. as well. Really like him as a player. Um, and Shaboshlai is probably not, he's going to be doubtful for the Cup final as well. So he's like, suddenly, Trent obviously as well. Yeah, they've been suddenly, decimated. Yeah. yeah, that's really Pretty unlucky. Pretty bad. At the worst period of the season but I think in the context of their just as you're starting to come into a hectic period yeah but in the context of their running they uh I think they have quite a decent run so if they can avoid any more and get people back in a couple of months then yeah they should be okay but bloody hell it's very unlucky for them the knock-on effect from the FPL perspective is obviously Jota Nunes if you're obviously coming into this week and they're they obviously look like they're going to be unavailable for the foreseeable. They they become the easy sell now, whereas it possibly might have been Palmer for those with, say, too much Chelsea, Tottenham, Luton as well this week. If they're going to be out for a while. It's, they become the easiest sells, don't yeah. they? If you're sitting there this week and you've got, say, nine players and just hypothetically Nunes looks like he's not going to be back for 27 on top of Jota and you've got both... Well, it's minus four to get out, isn't it? Yeah, I, I was going to sell Nunes. I've got Nunes, and I was going to sell him this week for Solanke anyway. Just feels like doesn't have a game. Solanke does. It's yeah, we, we'd always spoke one. with Nunes that I think if people landed there, that a move onto Solanke, or for those who haven't got Watkins, was going to feel like inevitable. Yeah. Whereas Jota was, was, was going to be an easier hold just because of the more limited options. It's almost much easier and refined to make those decisions in the forward players at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's now Holland, Solanke, Watkins, Tony, isn't it? Basically, yeah. you can make a case for Hoyland is obviously on an incredible yeah, run at the moment, um, and that might come into play for a few. But I still don't quite know how you'd buy that over Watkins if you didn't own this week. Yeah, and even if you go Hoyland, you might look at it and go, "Well, it's twenty six, and then it's Manchester City away." So is it just one week and then Solanke? I think when you break that down, you might just end up going Solanke instead, for example. Yeah. Whereas in the midfield, there's obviously a wider array of choices that you can make. Um, for Brentford, Ethan Pinnacona's another one. I mean, I top added by O pulling out in the warm-up yesterday. It's been an absolute nightmare, really. For the double game week options, and can I just say one thing on that as well? I know it's irrelevant to the specific discussion on the game, but it's been a bad week for the double game week assets. Two points. One, it's not finished yet, although for some like Jota, it obviously is. So it's not over yet. But two, one double, one shit double game week don't mean the next one's going to be shit. No. All right? Almost makes me feel more likely that next time it will be the double game week players that will go off. But those who've held like your, 
Any those who've had the best week are those sitting there with like Watkins, Solanke, Saka, yeah. Arsenal defensive, etc. Rather than the double game week players so far. Ethan Pinnock, there was a rumor went round that there was a problem with someone in the Brentford squad on the Friday night, and I know Tom had, Tom Med had picked up that he'd heard that it might have been Pinnock, but it was only a rumor. There was no confirmation on it. And yeah, sure enough, it was Pinnock who missed out. I think the statistic as well was he played like 50 Premier League games in a row oh or something as well. Yeah, so sick. And we don't know how long he's going to be out. And actually, West Ham's offensive output at the moment, which is three goals since Pakatar's injury against Arsenal, wow. which is last year. And that includes two against Sheffield United. So that barely counts at the moment, considering what others are doing against them at Bramwell Lane. Um, and the other goal was a penalty, by the way means that a Brentford defensive asset, if you got it this week, doesn't even look terrible at West Ham. So if you've gone Pinnock, you've been mad unlucky. Yeah. Um, another goal for Tony. What is that, four and five since I think back? so, yeah. Brilliant. And they, I, thought, I was sat here a couple of weeks ago saying, I don't want to go near him because of the fixtures, but he's plodding along. Um, but although the defensive assets might look good for West Ham away, they didn't look great against Liverpool at the weekend. Several errors. I mean, the two of the goals are just failure to cut out passes. The fourth goal is comical. It's two of them fail to cut out a pass that obviously leads to, was it Gakpo's goal was the, the fourth? I think so, yeah. Salah takes the third brilliantly after yep. a communication error between Collins and me. Hesitation. It's unusual that for Ben Mee. He's a good experienced player. Um, Collins didn't deal with the situation well, but me left him kind of hung out to dry 1v1 versus Salah as well. And the first goal was... They, they, they do overcommit on set pieces, Brentford, because they want to box you in. You might be saying at one point it was a corner against Tottenham where they'd actually built up originally and every outfield player was in our six-yard box. Oh, wow, OK. And three or four came to the edge of the area just as it was about to be tanned. But they don't leave, like, one right back. Sure. They really squeeze the play. So if you break quick over the top, what a header that is by Jota, by the way. Yeah, brilliant. Um, I've, I've watched it back a few times. I, he, must, he doesn't even look. Do you think he just got a shout? Maybe, yeah, maybe. I was, I was looking but the at that awareness as well. is brilliant. Yeah. And Nunez's finish, it, finish is extraordinary. But it also sums something up about Nunez. It's very rare. I'd agree with something Michael Warren says. <laughs> okay, what was it? But it did on this. Well, you're going through one on one, and he's pulled out the most outrageous finish. Yeah, and it's brilliant. But it's also the hardest way to I was score. Say, the probability of that being the goal. You so easy to chip that over the bar yeah. and stuff, or, or not, not high, high enough, enough and yeah. into the keeper. I was thinking that as well. He's got it perfect. I don't want to criticize him because it's an amazing finish. But he's got, he's got all that time to think about it. To place it on the and side. And this time he's got it right. But yeah, but even with his speed, just knock it around the goalkeeper. Yeah. And I know Fernandes and Garnacho had chances similarly as then went around the goalkeeper and didn't score. Yeah. But you're, you're pro um, Rashford as well. I think three of them, wasn't it? All three of them. I only remember two of them, to be honest. I'm thinking of the Laconga block. Um, yeah. Was I, that on Rashford? I was on Fernandes, I think. I think that was Bruno, yeah. Um, he was very good yesterday. We'll talk about it later, yeah. obviously. But he's picked the hardest finish, and it does sum him up. Yeah. That you can be absolutely brilliant. But what, what are you picking that finish for, mate? Yeah. It's weird to be critical when he's, when he's done it so well. So Liverpool now needs a big watch and wait because of obviously all them injuries. But it's a very impressive result helped by some really bad defensive mistakes from, from Brentford assets. And to be honest, if they defend like that at City tomorrow night... I'm the, glad I've got triple captain the only, on. The only way Haaland will blank tomorrow night under that circumstance if we don't play, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, cool. 